The latest coin game from GMT doesn't even happen on planet Earth. Red Dust Rebellion is coin on Mars, and I'm going to show you what's inside the box as we rebox it today here on Legendary Tactics. Who would have thought that when Andy and Abyss came out over 12 years ago that we would be playing coin games on Mars? This is Red Dust Rebellion, the first coin game that takes place in outer space, or, or at least on another planet. And uh, this game has a lot going on. Not only because it's obviously got a lot of components, you can see there's a lot of rule books, rules references, playbook content, all this stuff. Mainly because this whole narrative had to be created from scratch. There is no civilization on Mars at the time of this recording. And so the designer had to come up with this all by themselves. So anyway, it's really a, a neat uh, experiment. I love the fact that the coin system has proved so robust and so flexible that it allows this sort of content to come out. And so we're taking a, a scan, first of all, just looking at all the components. We're going to rebox it uh, here for you and uh, give you a, a bit of an idea. Now, there's actually five factions four of which are playable. One of them is a non-player faction. Now, the first faction is the Martian government, which is concerned with the support of the Martian people as well as the confidence of the government back on Earth. Then we have the Red Dust Movement, uh, whose aim is to, to build opposition to the Martian government and build bases. So probably a little bit basically like the FARC if you've played uh, Andean Abyss. Then you have the corporations. This is the equivalent of the cartels, not green this time, um, actually, but they're, they're just all about gaining uh, profits at the end of the day. And then finally, you have the Church of the Reclaimer. Um, and the idea is to preserve Mars by uh, removing enemy bases, placing your own bases, and increasing your control. So it's more of a movement to protect the people of Mars. And then finally, you have the Earth Government, which is the non-player faction. And the forces of the EarthGov player are manipulated by either the corporations or the Martian government, depending on who has control of the uh, Earth Government at that moment. Um, there's lots of components. I'm still reading the rules and figuring things out. So there's some things I can't explain. But this, this deck here is the Solitaire deck. It allows... Uh, players to substitute bots for uh, any or all of the factions so you can play solitaire or you can have the bot take over uh, some of the factions for you. Um, the uh, pieces are very familiar probably to coin players. They are uh, the wooden bits uh, that uh, have gorillas and all that sort of thing. You can uh, probably recognize that. There's some nice dice. And then the board uh, itself is actually a really uh, interesting uh, design. So there are three regions of the Martian surface that are represented here with the, the typical, you know, sort of cities, civilizations, as well as the surrounding countryside. And then you have an area called the wilderness, which is kind of everywhere else. You also have an interesting supply chain where you uh, request supplies from Earth, but they don't arrive right away. So you have to kind of plan ahead, make that part of your strategy. It's, it's a very interesting uh, idea. Um, and you can see there's all sorts of, uh, of new kind of elements, which I think really make this a unique coin game. If you, if you feel the, the coin system is feeling a bit stale, I think this might be the remedy, uh, just because it does feel uh, a lot different when I've been reading through the rules and so forth. It's, uh, it's definitely a very, very unique design, but very rooted in the coin system. So we're going to put the board back in the box here and take a look at uh, some of the counters. Uh, they're nice and thick and shiny, as you can see, uh, representing things like uh, support, uh, you know, or opposition, uh, control by different factions, and uh, tracking things like resources and, and all that good stuff. And even the, the usual overflow boxes in case the, the uh, pieces uh, get too clustered together. And we're going to put the counter sheets very carefully back in the box. And we will turn our attention to the player aids, which if you have played some coin uh, before, any coin games in the past, you'll recognize these. This has the 
different uh, operations and special activities of the different factions, uh, as well as a walkthrough of what the game's equivalent of the propaganda round would be. Now, these can take the uh, form mainly of the dust storms. And uh, as you would imagine, it's very thematic because the dust storms shut everything down while they rage and uh, allow a bit of a reset. Um, there's also something called the flashpoint round, which is triggered when a counter reaches a certain point on a track and has a separate procedure that you walk through. So that looks very interesting. There's a lot, as I said, there's a lot going on. There's a lot that's been added to the coin system that you might be familiar with. We also have the little uh, player cards here, which uh, offer a spot where you can store uh, a base and some, uh, you know, your, your different uh, uh, counters and so forth and tracking various things. Um, we also have the rules and reference um, booklet, um, which talks about the uh, how to operate the uh, the solitaire game and an example of play to teach you how to use the bot. So plenty of reading there. Then we have the uh, rule book, which is actually very well laid out, but it is well, a little bit longer. Uh, just letting you know, and especially since it it does feel like a very different type of coin game. It's, I think, well worth reading the rules. There's a lot of new stuff they've added. And then we have the playbook, which has an example of play that can help you to learn the game more quickly. There's a card manifest that chronicles all the history involved and also the designer's notes, which I know is my favorite part. Am I the only one? Anyway, so I'm going to put the, uh, the box back on top here, the box lid. And uh, we're going to put this back in the shrink wrap. If you've watched our channel before, you know we love to do that with our games. Make sure that they are dust free and that they remain uh, in the best possible condition for the next play. So I'm going to put this, uh, this shrink wrap right back on here. So anyway, as I put this uh, game from uh, here, I'm going to just uh, put it back into the box that uh, it arrived in. Uh, this might be a, a really one of the most innovative chapters in the coin series to date. I know that the system is actually famous for its innovation, but this is a really, really intriguing uh, new world to explore. So hoping you can take a look at Red Dust Rebellion and let us know what you think here on Legendary Tactics.